Hey, good morning. Ben here with Studio on the Lake. Uh, part of this, this is another video, but just to show you, this is an $80 uh, power carver I picked up. It's made in China. So you'll see that during the initial part of this, and then uh, later on you'll get a review of that. But I went ahead and used this uh, on the man. So everybody's doing a pumpkin man. It's that time of year. So I thought, why not? Uh, I'll do one too. So, as always, it starts with a, a piece of basswood. You'll notice that initially, when I drew this head out, I liked the head, but it, it ended up being a little bit too short. And when I, when I cut this out, since there is no pattern, and this is uh, all in my head on, on where I wanted to go, I wasn't sure what I wanted to have him hold, but I knew I wanted his hands out, and I wanted uh, big feet you'll see where this goes a little bit later in the video and this is going to be two parts uh, because of the stuff that I added on and, and the carving of the head. That's for those of you that uh, know what that means. Um, I kind of wanted him to have big eyes looking up to the left and then kind of have a face down below uh, more of a cartoonish character than uh, than just a straightforward pumpkin. Uh, although the a couple pieces I throw in there uh, later on, the pumpkin goes. You can see in the background there is a clock. There's a uh, uh, spirit birdhouse, which is almost done. Uh, the video that's being edited, but the the clock is kind of funny. I, I carved that left hand side and uh, had it laying there, and I noticed the other day in the yard that my dog had eaten it. So that needs to get recarved. He, he comes in, he picks up pieces of wood and, and falls around. So there's the blank cut out on both sides. Uh, a lot of this I, I went ahead and sped up because you don't uh, need to see that uh, how we get there. But I'm just taking off uh, all the excess that uh, I don't... Uh, you can do this with knives and... Uh, you can do it with the power carvers, the et cetera, et cetera. And, and as most of you know, I just like to do it with a DeWalt uh, grinder with a, oh, probably 36 grit on it. So uh, we're, we're contouring him out. Originally, he was going to have a body, and I got to looking at it, and I thought, why not another pumpkin uh, holding him in there? I knew at this point, uh, looking at this thing, that the arms were going to be problematic because the grain runs vertical in those, and all you have to do is slightly tap on one of them and they'll break off. In fact, I did I did break the left one later on, but I ended up gluing it back together and I ended up putting a couple of pumpkins in his hands and I attached them to the side of his head where they came in, and that gave it a little bit more strength. But uh, the, it would be worth doing the arms separate on this to make it a little bit stronger so when you when you're planning your carvings out uh, you want to go from block to round so what I'm doing here is rounding everything over <coughs> normally I would uh, you can see a center line down the the left hand side there I kind of ignored that a little bit just like I ignored uh, cutting him out his head and stuff were shorter. I just roughed it out on the band so sort of following my pattern since there is not a pattern and this is completely imagination uh, We'll see how it turns out So here, here's that Chinese carver and like, like I said I do um, I use it for Part of this and then you'll see that I, I go back to uh, my uh, hand pieces, my Ultima carvers, and uh, you'll see the review. But it's a little weak, but certainly would for for eighty dollars, uh, it, it would do the trick if you're trying to figure out if you want to get into power carving or not. Eighty dollars and uh, oh, another thirty or forty worth of bit, bits, and, and you'd be in good shape uh, to try out this power carving stuff. So here I'm just rounding over his head, and uh, that, that's a saber bit in there. 
uh, a medium cut and it, it was almost too much bit for this uh, thing the other other thing that you'll see in the review is uh, it doesn't fit as well in my hand as my, as mine do that might just be a preference so I'm kind of laying out his face and, and uh, you kind of have to be me if you to figure out what the heck I'm doing here so he's got a eyebrow up above an eye on the bottom and I wanted his eyelid kind of uh, halfway over the eye so that's what we're we're setting out there and those two dots he's gonna be looking up in that direction and his face is gonna be kind of scrunched down so that's it that's again a saber I figured he'd have a big old bump on the tip of his forehead with a knot kind of in between the eyes there and all I'm doing is uh, some outlining work and, and I'm, I'm attempting to leave the outline is is for leaving the high spots and you got to cut everything down away and then let those high spots uh, pop out on that I don't know what use this guy is uh, none other than take up some shelf space maybe bust him out uh, during Halloween but everybody else was carving pumpkins and uh, I figured I had to I needed to get in on that what the heck right that's kind of defining the nose and, and you can see it's going down a long long way uh, and then his, his mouth is going to be underneath. So here's the, a, a jawline underneath. And he's got his head kicked back in a pose and kind of looking a little bit down uh, in this. I, I've told you before, the, typically on my carvings, the, the first one turns out to be, if I'm duplicating a piece, the first one turns out to be the best. And then the subsequent ones after that uh, of lesser quality or, or along those lines uh, at least according to my wife so I, I think in this guy's case he the uh, second or third one would be much better because I really had no idea where I was going with this and then I have noticed on a lot of these if you don't have an idea where you're going a lot of times the first one you see some things that you you would change on this and one of the things I would have changed is I would have made him a little bit wider and a little bit rounder although I do kind of like the little scrawny character that comes out of this and it, his whole intent is supposed to be evil so there's the whole eye sequence right there on that one you can you can see those starting to develop and that upper portion is an eyelid and then the bottom portion is the eyeball and that's what I just cut in was the eyeball above that uh, eyeball going under that huge with the lid partially coming down if you look down in the description down there you you see a lot of folks that uh, carvers that I follow uh, and, and I recommend go over and check them out support everybody uh, with this wood carving stuff so that's going to be the corner of the pupil I'm drawing in just to see if I like what he's doing and he's uh, he's all right so far so now I've switched to a, uh, a diamond bit around one. You've heard me talk about this before. I can go in any general direction. It leaves little ridges that you need to go back and clean up, but uh, I'm, I'm not restricted to cutting kind of in, in, in a plane on that. I can, I can go all over and basically erase the stuff. You can see I'm rounding out that, that, that forehead ridge, uh, cutting down to an eyebrow. And then that portion in there I'm messing around with is the uh, eyelid going over the eye. This ended up in two parts because there's a lot of there's a bunch of details on the end, and all I really got done in uh, 15 minutes of editing. Uh, this thing took about two hours, probably some total, two maybe three hours. Not including the painting, uh, I typically don't show the painting. I find that to be pretty boring. You can work out the paint yourself. I, I do use Josonia paints, acrylic paints. Uh, I don't seal it. And if you're if you're interested in that from the from 
start I'll, I'll go ahead and do a video on that and, and bore the hell out of you and, and let you watch what I do I don't seal my pieces anymore before I paint I, I used to used to put gesso on them and then uh, sand them down and go that I, a competition duck I might go ahead and seal that but by and large I skip that step and just let the uh, paint soak into the wood and put on maybe another coat if required I, I do have plans there's a couple videos that are that are set up obviously I'm still working on the clock uh, I owe you the finished part of the lady troll and uh, I am putting together another old uh, old man uh, spirit birdhouse which has cottonwood uh, glued to the front of that and I can't remember there's a oh I, I do uh, one of these days I'll, I'll clean up the shop I can't film it until I clean it up so you don't get to see what a mess I operate in but uh, I, I will show you a carving through the production phase in other words uh, I'll show you everything that I edit out and I'll explain which cameras I'm using what kind of lighting I have going on and uh, how I, I edit it down the editing software the camera you name it but before I do that I, I need to clean my act up and I just haven't been motivated to do that uh, yet winter's coming along uh, each of these days it's been fairly chilly up here in northern Wisconsin uh, as falls coming around the leaves are starting to turn and I, I have cranked the stove up so I need to clean the shop up so I don't have all that dust laying around uh, and, and burn the place down because then we'd have a new studio on the lake and we don't need that so you start to see him kind of taking shape now, in a lot of these things, if, if you were to go ahead and model, the hardest thing is to get the poses correct on these. I mean, it, you see a lot of beginning carvers, and it's neat stuff uh, that they're doing, but they, they tend to be static poses. They st tend to be straight up and down. Uh, I guess the equivalent of a drawing, uh, you see a kid's stick figure drawing, that's kind of what some of the uh, beginner's carvings look like. And, and really the the artistic part of it comes about once you figure out uh, what you're going to do with the pose and the pose is uh, what really makes things come alive once you figure out that uh, hey you can actually make this wood uh, carve it and and do the technical part then then it becomes trying to come up with something unique in that This character was chosen just because everybody else is doing a pumpkin and I thought well I need to get on that bandwagon and do a pumpkin also. So pumpkin man seemed to be the way to go. All right, right there you can see my blue uh, 40,000 RPM handpiece. That other one said it was 35,000. I think that might be a uh, misnomer. And you get to see me tear that thing apart. Uh, in, in the critique, but like I said for 80 bucks this thing here will set you back about 350 370 uh, Versus 80 you can certainly uh, Check out if you want to want to do this or not. I don't recommend using garbage tools But certainly if, if you wanted to find out if it's something you were interested in uh, That's really not a whole lot of money to spend so I'm, I'm cutting taking a lot more away that, that microcarver I have there fits my hand it's the one I'm used to and it doesn't fatigue your hand kind of like that uh, cheap Chinese dog uh, one that I was playing with does that's a cuts all bit in there if you look down in the link uh, that I do have a cuts all affiliate and just like Jordy you if you go ahead and follow that link and use that code that'll get you five percent off of uh, those bits that's something that cuts all does for us and, and there's no reason not to save five dollars on uh, these things they're 15 to 30 bucks a piece and uh, if you buy four or five of them it starts to add up and you can save some money and it does help out the channel a little bit so this is a pretty aggressive bit and I, I'm just refining all the pieces that I, I 
was starting to work them out. Uh, initially I cut down to that and now I'm rounding those out and cutting down just a little bit more. And I think I think that's probably three times the fast as uh, I don't know why the heck I'm, I'm running this guy out of frame. I might fix that if I uh, think about it. There you go, you got him back in back in frame. You can see I turn these pieces around and around and I, I won't spend a whole lot of time on any one particular feature. I'll work on one part of that and then switch back. I don't try to finish each section all at one time. I do it kind of as a whole and it seems to come out a little bit better uh, when I do that. I, I like his pose. I like the fact that, that his head's sitting down in here. I, if I had, had I modeled this in clay or something before I did this, I, I might have changed it just a little bit. But by and large, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way that the whole thing is developing. I really don't have a plan for the body. But as you can see from the finished one, I, he ended up with uh, pumpkin feet, a pumpkin in the middle for his belly, uh, vines for arms, and then two pumpkins out on, on either side of that. I guess in a nutshell, if, if you're uh, trying to learn from this, you, you just kind of watch how I'm working the piece, and uh, there, there's no particular talent in in using these these things. I use them like a pencil. Now I'm starting to put the mouth in. You can see I left kind of a larger, I don't know, Simpson upper lip for lack of better reference. And then the bottom of his jaw is going to get cut out. That's what I'm cutting out right now. Is where he would his head would end up in there. This all gets gone back over uh, with, with uh, smaller grit bits and then uh, finally finishing up with a ruby bit or a diamond bit and, and smoothing it out. I, I didn't take a whole lot of sandpaper to this, but you can go as far as you want to get the finish. And starting to cut in some pumpkin-like ridges down through there, and I'll do a lot more later on. And those, those ridges will all get highlighted in the painting. Refining the stem there. The original one I when I slapped that pattern on there with without any any reference material I thought I might bend that to the left. It was just easier cutting it on the bandsaw when I cut the blank out to go ahead and <coughs> And make that guy kind of stand straight up, right? So we're coming to the end of the the first one. I like to keep the videos about 15 minutes uh, Check out everybody down below, but you can see where he's going with that and uh, how it's coming out in the second video, we'll, we'll have him finished up. So that's kind of what's going to happen. Subscribe, like, comment, and as always, uh, thanks for watching. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.